So give us a primer here on scalar energy. This is the energy of the stars. It's the initial energy of the stars, of the sun, scalar energy. And Tesla knew that. Tesla later in his life was tapping into that energy of the sun, the stars. He called it radiant energy. So if you look at Tesla's career, it began with AC electricity. Later in his life, he was no longer working with any wires, any type of induction motor. Gone were the armature. Gone were any type of moving part. Tessa was working with the free energy of the universe, and he proved that with his laboratory in Wardenclyffe in Long Island. So that was a standing scalar energy tower that he was able to extract energy, abundant energy from the cosmos. Well, that's where I want to go. I don't want to be tied down to electricity. AC electricity is passe as far as I'm concerned. I want to introduce this other type of energy, the energy of the stars, that is unlimited, safe, clean energy. So you mentioned um, electromagnetic, electromagnetic magnetivity. Those, those are the, the two types of energy that exist, I guess, in the universe, scalar yes. and um, electromagnetic um how does scalar energy travel i mean is it is it faster than the speed of light it's everywhere so let's go back to my statement if it's from the sun and the stars then the universe is flooded with this energy so it's the presence of the universe some people call that christ consciousness others might call that the zone or the field or the matrix so when we're looking at scalar energy, there is no vector. There is no point A to point B. It's not moving in any direction. It's omnidirectional. And that's what Tesla realized, that the ether allows this energy to propagate and be everywhere instantaneously. So if that's the case, you never have a problem accessing this energy. Frankly, you don't need an infrastructure. The ether is the infrastructure. So with electricity, you have to move it from point A to point B. Scalar energy pre-exists everywhere. The universe is the infrastructure. That's one of the pertinent matters that, that I've discovered. Tessa discovered that, obviously, that the ether is the infrastructure. So um, how do you capture it? How do you, uh, yeah. how do you receive scalar energy? I studied under a family by the name of Hieronymus. I'm pointing in my lab to a scalar energy instrument that was, if originally developed by Galen Hieronymus, an American inventor. Now, this scalar energy instrument is able to assume, or if you will, collect what I call the double helix. That's what scalar energy is. In composition, it's a double helix. I'm going to show a photograph of a scalar wave. This is a double helix scalar wave that's emanating from a Tesla coil. So what's the point? This instrument that I have behind me allows, affords, creates that double helix structure. And right. with that, we have a local environment of scalar energy. It's not electricity. Let me just uh, remind listeners, if they want to see uh, the photographs and uh, Tom Palladino's fabulous lab in behind him, uh, check out this podcast on my Rumble channel, Strange Planet. Also, uh, it's it'll be up on the YouTube channel as well, Strange Planet. Uh, for those of you listening... To the audio-only version, uh, you can either go and uh, check it out on Rumble or YouTube, or just, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do our best to draw some mental images for you. So that double helix, obviously, we're familiar with that because of the double strand uh, from DNA. Are they related? Of course. Of course. That's a salient point. Thank you. So a double helix, a scalar energy double helix downloads into our DNA. What's my point? The intelligence of scalar energy creates and maintains our DNA. If you look at this model, it's a Fibonacci sequence. The Fibonacci sequence is found in a scalar wave. The Fibonacci sequence is found in our DNA. So the golden mean, the golden proportion, is downloaded into our DNA. So that's divine intelligence. What's the point? What's the creative strength behind any genomic form? It's scalar energy. What creates and maintains our DNA? The scalar wave. That's how important this energy is. And that's why this energy has to be ubiquitous. It has to be sending instructions everywhere in the universe. It cannot be a vector. It has to be omnidirectional. 
Um, so this is non-Newtonian. We're not talking about physics here. We're not talking about chemistry. This is non-Newtonian. Yes, sir. It's non-physical, non-Newtonian physics. This is a new branch of physics. So what do I propose? This branch of physics is intelligence. Some people call that collective consciousness, information. We're, we're way past the physical chemical stage. We're not working with any physicality whatsoever. Uh, just getting back to the DNA strands there for a moment. Um, so are we designed then as almost as uh, radio receivers? Yes. Yes, we are. That's, that's apropos. The radio station, so to speak, are the stars, and we are the portable radio. We receive that energy. And once we can inculcate it and embrace that concept, now we understand how this life force energy, that's another name for scalar energy, life force energy is responsible for life. It's responsible for the life molecule. That's how important this energy is. Um, what did you study in school and how did, how did you stumble yeah. on this? I, I, I had a long academic career. <laughs> how did I study? Well, I, I had a basic education. I had a, a good collegiate education. But after that, you have to go this alone. This is all groundbreaking research. I've been at this now for 50 years. I studied Tesla. In theory, I studied the, my predecessor, Galen Hieronymus, in practice. I was actually able to visit the Hieronymus laboratory. I worked closely with his family. I never met him. He was deceased. So the point is, as you mentioned, I stand on the sh shoulders of giants. Tessa and Hieronymus were, were the pioneers. I'm not the pioneer. And it, it more or less fell into my lap, so to speak. This is God's providence. But now I continue on with that legacy. It's a lot of work. It's quite rewarding. And without equivocation, this is a new branch of physics that will change the social order. Um, we should also point out you have a, a YouTube um page as well and that is uh that's tom paladino scaler we'll put the yes. link in the episode notes yes. and uh, the website also in the episode notes that's scalarlight.com scalarlight.com all right so let's talk about um how you're utilizing this to to heal and promote optimum health okay so keep in mind, this is not a chemical process. So what do I mean? I don't work with people. I work with energy fields, force fields. People will email me a photograph. For those of you who are listening by, listening by audio, I'm holding up my photograph. My photograph is my bilocated version. It's my energy field. I don't work with Tom or people in the flesh, never. I work with photographs of people that are their bilocated version. My energy field is on a photograph. I literally take a person's photograph, I print it out, and I place a person's photograph inside the instrument. Once a person's photograph is in that local scalar energy environment, they uh, enjoy, they receive the benefits of scalar energy. Once again, to use your analogy, if the stars are the radio station, that photograph is the portable radio that receives the instructions, that receives the transmission of energy. So a photograph receives the energy. What energy? Scalar energy. Now, this is only possible with the scalar energy instrument. You must access non-Newtonian physics. There is another dimension. There is a dimension of quantum, a dimension of what some people call the Akashic record. It's a non-physical dimension. That's what I access through my instrument, and I access that through a person's force field opening up an entirely new vista, an entirely new uh, range of, of possibilities here, no longer bound to the chemical level, we're working at the level of instructions of intelligence. I would much rather work at the level of intelligence than be relegated to a biological level. All right, um, I understand this is non-Newtonian and most of us were schooled in Newtonian. So you'll have to hold my hand and maybe some of our listeners a little bit to explain how this works because a photograph uh, it's also a chemical process, right? Yes, it, yes, it is. So, uh, or if it's not, if it's a digital, then it's, you know, ones and zeros. How do those Correct. ones and zeros or that chemical yes. process, That's a good emotion point. in the film and the light, how does that translate into yes. that photograph of you? How is that Tom Palladino? Yeah, a photograph is my mirror-like image. And this is 
by way of email. It's, it's not a Polaroid. So this is, yes, a, a, a digital format. And what I've discovered, and Hieronymus discovered this, any photograph, whether it's a Polaroid or an emailed photograph, has a person's energy field attached to it. Any photograph captures my energy field. That's the key. Now, we can't think in terms, again, of Newtonian science. This is way beyond the chemical. There's a scalar signal, not an electromagnetic signal. There's a scalar energy signal attached to that photograph. This is the new science that we're going to have to delve into to better understand how this works. But this is quite promising because I not only can work with one person by photograph, I can work with 100 photographs simultaneously. In my laboratory earlier this morning, I was working with half a million photographs. You make like a contact sheet with them with yes. thousands yes. and thousands of individuals' photographs that you yes. receive through the website, through the email. Yes. Yes. All right. Now you could see how we're not at the brick and mortar level. We're not at the physical level anymore. We're at the level of information. And information is 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 much simpler to work with. You know, many people say that Amazon digitized commerce. Well, they have in many ways. I've digitized human health, quantum health. I'm not working at the physical level. 